important. Um, I suppose I'm I've been guilty in the past of not definitely not drinking enough water. Um, it's kind of not something that I, I particularly enjoy, so I kind of substituted an awful lot of time with like flavored water and stuff. And um, but it definitely does change coming up to a game, you know. And um, I definitely focus on it a bit more. And I, I do feel that like you know in my whoop journal every morning I have the you know the, the prompts like did you hydrate enough yesterday and it kind of nearly guilts me into ensuring that I do drink enough water. I definitely feel it when I'm not hydrated enough just I think it's almost like my mental alertness a little bit and and I might just feel a little bit sore after games and after hard sessions so like in Tokyo hydration was obviously a huge thing and something we'd be very very on top of um, but I could feel the days when I had it got it, hadn't got it right, and I could feel the days when I had. Caffeine's an interesting one for me. Um, I've probably noticed during the summer as a teacher, it's nice. I'm not uh, I can get a bit of a lie in, and I'm not too stressed during the day. So I would wean off caffeine big time. I really try and avoid it, and use it then uh, closer to game day to actually give me a bit of a kick. As much as I enjoy a coffee now and then, I do, I'm very conscious of it and my timings of it. I wouldn't be taking coffee after uh, two or three o'clock. Um, on game day, I would probably take a caffeine gum. I just find it easier on my stomach rather than a coffee. And that would probably be it for me, maybe another one of half day. Definitely, you know, around racing, it's a kind of a tricky one for us because we have to weigh in as well. So, um, we can't be drinking too much water before because we weigh in like two hours before the race. So pretty much um, after that two hours, it's about like getting refueled and rehydrated essentially. So yeah, we'd be um, we'd use Dioralite an awful lot and uh, stuff like that just to make sure that you're getting hydrated as quickly as possible before the race because you know the two hour window is like pretty short especially if you're a bit dehydrated you know sometimes you might have to sweat down a bit to make the weight as well so um yeah there's that aspect of it but then it's kind of different during the week of training because you're just trying to get as much water in as possible because you're sweating so much especially uh, in the lead up to tokyo we were doing a lot of uh heat training so kind of we had a bit of a greenhouse set up in the wrong center with some heater so we we're getting through like four or five liters of water in a session it's hard to be honest leading up especially when you know i probably sit around 73 or 74 kilos normally but then i have to weigh in at 69 so um the weeks before you'd be you know watching what you're eating and then you might get a, another kilo or so on the day but you can't you can't lose that much water on the day or else you'll never get hydrated enough in that two hour period. So it's pretty, it's it's really planned. Like, you know, if you, if you say you're gonna have to sweat a litre, you're gonna have to put that litre back and then more. So we kind of try to kill two birds with one stone as well with like pre-workout and um, carb drinks and stuff. So you'd be getting the hydration as well as the, you know, a bit of energy for the racing. Yeah, I think obviously you, for us, obviously we have a structure of what the week is going to look like. So there'll be different days where your output will be more. And um, therefore we'd have a lot more carbohydrates where they'll include that in our, we've got like a water bottle and then your carbohydrates bottle. And um, so you can kind of balance between the two. Um, and and then obviously the electrolytes included in that as well, post session. Um, for me, I'm yeah. I love the carbs, uh, the carbohydrate drink. Um, a lot of my sessions are based around a lot of high speed running, so my output would be yeah, a lot <laughs> if you like. We've got these energy gels again. The science and sports stuff, obviously, we're associated. Well, we're associated with um, mm. the club. See, so yeah, there's like pure caffeine. I think it's some insane amount of caffeine which I'd always have before a mm. game in the changing room before we go for the warm up. Um, and it, you actually feel it hit you when you start mm. running, you can feel it kind of in your nervous system, if that makes sense. It's like, it's, it's proper strong, but yeah. I feel like, I don't know whether it's a mental thing where I always need one of them before before a game. Yeah, yeah, and then you're not sleeping that night. Yeah, no, no chance. No way. <laughs> That's when the recovery dips. I, I did that. I, yeah, when you get into the red, yeah. I, I did that years ago. So when I didn't understand caffeine, uh, we were on, uh, it was 2013 on the Lions Tour and I they had a Viper, it was Viper it was called, it was like a maxi muscle product, it was it was called Viper and it was, like you said, a crazy amount of caffeine in it and I 
I don't know, I was up the wall trying to, like, because it was a midweek game, trying to get into the weekend team. And I took, like, two Red Bulls. I took a Viper on the way to the game and a Viper in the warm-up. Um, and after the game, I, I couldn't stop shaking. Like, the physios came over and said, like, you all right? I was like, I, did, oh, I think I took too much caffeine. And they were like, well, how much did you take? And I thought I talked them through and they were like, right. We were on the bus home and they rang the hotel and were like, we need an ice bath in room, whatever room I was staying in. And I had to get into ice bath for like 15 minutes to balance everything out again. So, um, a steep learning curve. There's nothing better than water. You know, if really, if you're drinking appropriate amount of water and you're taking a normal, balanced diet, there's no reason to put anything in your water. Absolutely no reason whatsoever. Now, there are times during training, our primary fuel that we use during intermittent team sports like Gilly Games are carbohydrates. And if you think about, uh, you, you, you have storage of both fat and carbohydrate in your body. You have 100,000 calories of fat. You have around 3,000 calories of carbohydrate. And that's the prepared fuel during intermittent exercise. So there is a likelihood if particularly during difficult training sessions or really prolonged training sessions. If you haven't had the appropriate nutrition between training sessions, there is a likelihood that you could arrive with lower than optimal levels of, of that carbohydrate fuel. So taking, you know, uh, uh, water with carbohydrate in it, maybe a seven to nine percent, because that can be absorbed from the stomach and used by, by the contracting the, the muscles themselves. So, yes, that would be the one thing is probably carbohydrates. Um, but again, if you're coming, having replenished your stores, making sure that you've eaten very soon after training, because that's when we can maximize the storage of carbs. Because in order for the carbs to be stored in your muscles, they have to be taken into the cell. And the, the little proteins that take it into the cell, they're in abundance after training. So probably within two to three hours. So this thing about going home and not eating and waiting until the next morning, if you did that two or three days in a row, we know from research that your muscle levels of, of carbs will start to decrease. And we know that when your carb levels start to decrease, we can't increase, we can't exercise at the same intensity, but the exercise feels more difficult. So your perception of effort goes up when you, when you don't have an available source of carbohydrates. The best example is the marathon when you hit the wall. Basically, you've run out of carbs and we know what the consequence is of that. So I would say with water, the one thing I would say, yes, is probably carbo is taking, taking uh, carbohydrates. So the hydration thing it had an evolution there. You know, at firstly it was just here, drink some water. Nobody talked that much about it. Then it became a big thing about drinking water. Then the sports drinks come in, then we realized they were bad. And then eventually we, we, we were getting the right fuel on board in terms of hydration. It, during my playing days, actually caffeine was seen as a no-no. Caffeine was seen as a diuretic and something that went against the hydration uh, aims that, that you were trying to fulfill, which was deeply frustrating because we all would have loved a good cup of coffee back then. And yet you, you never would have taken it pre-game. You would have thought it, it was the opposite of the type of thing you'd, you should be taking. So. That, that's probably a wee frustration uh, from the playing days. I know players now can enjoy their nice cups of coffee coming into match day, which would be great. But uh, no, caffeine was that. That is certainly something that is new to the fold at this stage. And in, in our time, it was just seen as something that maybe you shouldn't have been taking.